Okay, our third lesson in chapter 8 is on similarity, which is sort of the crux of this whole chapter. We've kind of been building up to it. Uh, learning targets, I can identify the characteristics of similar figures. We're going to actually define it today. And then I can apply this definition to solve problems. So I've given you eight pictures of triangles. And without actually telling you which ones are similar, I'm hoping you can just kind of use what you understand the word similar to be and kind of make some guesses. So if I pick A right here, I want you to look through the rest of these triangles and tell me which triangle looks similar to A. All right, hopefully if you're glancing through them, you're going to say A looks a lot like G, right? They both have a right angle, they have a short leg, a longer leg, and a hypotenuse. So I'm going to mark A and G. All right, now look for B. Think about what kind of a triangle B is. Is there one here that looks similar? I hope you're going to pick out E, right? They're both isosceles and they're kind of tall and steep. C, right? Which one looks similar to C? That should be an easy one to pick out. Hopefully you see H. They both appear to be equilateral triangles, right? And then that would leave D, this big obtuse triangle, to go with F. I hope when you look at these, you make some connections to that very first section we did on dilations, right? Uh, dilations, remember, are enlargements or reductions, and that's really what you should see by looking at this pair right here, right? The G is a reduction of A. Here you could say E is an enlargement of B, H is an enlargement of C, and F is a reduction of B. G. So dilations produce for us this idea of similar figures. All right, so let's write a definition down here in the box. And as we do that, we'll go back up and look at some of these figures we just marked. We're going to say if polygons, doesn't have to be triangles, are similar, then two things are true. All right. The first one you should notice, if you look above, is that corresponding angles are congruent. So we never change the angle measure. It's perhaps easiest to see if you look at the equilateral pair, right? Equilateral triangles are also equiangular. All these angles are 60. Well, they would also be 60 down here. Or if you look at the obtuse triangle, right, this angle measure appears to be the same as this angle measure. The sides are not the same, but the angle measures are congruent. So that is one thing. So if I had triangle ABC and I said it was similar to triangle DEF, the first thing we would know is that angle A is congruent to angle D angle B is congruent to angle E, and angle C is congruent to angle F. That's one thing that similarity tells us. The second thing is a little bit harder. It deals with the sides. We know that the sides are not congruent, but think back to what we studied when we talked about dilations, the relationship between that pre-image and the image. Remember we talked about a scale factor and the ratio of those sides was always the same. So that's where the second piece ties in. We say corresponding sides, well, they're not congruent, but they are proportional. Proportional. Those ratios are the same. And in fact, we know from dilations, they produce that scale factor. So here, I could say that AB is to DE as AC is to DF, as BC is to EF. Those would all produce the same scale factor from this dilation. So corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional. All right, so let's try down here. We have an example. Uh, notice this is the symbol here for similarity. It's like the congruence squiggle without the equal sign underneath it. That just means similar. So these two triangles are similar. Name the congruent angles. So A would go with angle D. B would go with angle E. And C would go with angle F because corresponding angles are congruent. Find the ratio of each pair of corresponding sides. Well, we know AB would go with DE, so that would be 8 fourths, right? AC would go with DF, that would be 10 fifths, 
and BC would go with EF, that would be 12 sixths. We can see that those all equal 2, which of course would be my scale factor. Okay, that's the ratio of the sides. They have to be the same. All right, to turn the page, let's look at something that's not a triangle. And so here we give you that these two quadrilaterals are similar, and we're going to ask for some missing pieces. All right, so the first thing I note is that AB, right, the first two letters correspond to the first two letters EF. So I know 6 goes with 9. That means 4 should go with FG. 7 should go with EH and 3 should go with GH. And we know if they're similar, all those ratios should be the same. So let's write them down. 6 went with 9. 4 goes with this one, which is FG. 3 on the first one goes with GH. And then 7 on the first one goes with EH. All right, so those are the ratios. Now it says find those values. Well, what's really important here is that you know one of them, because if you don't know one of the ratios, you're going to have a hard time. So that's 6 ninths. That's going to prove really useful. If I want to find FG, I'm going to use this ratio first. So I would say 6 out of 9 equals 4 over FG. I'll do my cross multiplying. That's 6 times FG equals 36 and FG is 6. If I want to find GH, that's this third ratio, I'm going to go back and use that 6 ninths again because that's the one that I know. If I cross multiply, I get 6 times GH equals 27. If I divide by 6, that's GH is what? 3 goes in there 9 times, 3 goes in there twice, that would be 9 halves. And my last one, EH, comes from this last ratio here. I'm back to the 6 ninths because that's the one I know. 7 over EH. So that 6 times EH equals 9 times 7 is 63. Divide by 6. So EH, 3 goes in there, what, 21 times? 3 goes in there twice. So those are my three values. It says find the ratio of the perimeter of ABCD to the perimeter of EFGH. Well, I know this perimeter right here, so let's find this value right here. 6 plus 4 is 10, and 7 plus 3 is 10, so that perimeter has to be 20. So this perimeter is going to be what? We have 9 plus 6 plus 9 halves and 21 halves. Well, 9 halves and 21 halves is 30 halves, which is 15. 15 and another 15 is... 30. So if I want this ratio, that would be 20 over 30, which reduces to 2 thirds. Okay. So notice if I take this 6 ninths and I reduce it, isn't that 2 thirds? Whoops, I'm off the screen. I apologize. So the ratio of the sides, the 6 to the 9, is 2 thirds, which means all the ratio of the sides is 2 thirds. But when I calculated the perimeters, that ratio also reduces to 2 thirds. That's not coincidence, right? If two triangles are similar, the ratio of the sides equals the ratio of the perimeters. So that is a rule or a theorem we're also going to employ. All right, so let's use these things. Let's remember to keep in mind similarity, corresponding angles congruent, corresponding sides proportional. Notice in this first example, all the information is about angles. So I'm going to hook up the corresponding angles. J is the first letter. It must go with P. So those are congruent. H is in the middle. O is in the middle. And then K goes with M. All right, now what do I know? J is 40. I don't have any information about angle P. H is 90. O is 1 half Y. K is... Do I not have K here? K is 
missing. I'm sorry, m is x plus 5. So it doesn't look like I have k in the given. I think I can probably find k though, right? If I mark these, if I draw you a picture here, and I have j, h, k, and I have p, o, m. Now think about it, h is 90, so that means o has to be 90. J is 40, so that means P has to be 40. So now if 90 plus 40 is 130, doesn't that mean K has to be 50? So that's how I get value K. I knew we could get that somehow. Or also for that example, then M would be 50. So now we're just finding X and Y, so I solve. To solve this, I would multiply both sides by 2. So y would be 180, and here I would just subtract 5, so x would be 45. So those would be my two values. So don't forget to use old things, like some of the angles in a triangle is 180. We'll continue to revisit those ideas. In the second problem, we're not worried about angles. We're worried about sides. So my recommendation is always to take this and write out the three ratios. BA must go with the first two letters, DO. And I would say AT goes with OT. And what did I miss? BT, first and last, go with DT, first and last. And then let's figure out what I know. Let's go to the diagram. BA I have no information about. DO I have no information about. So I'm going to have to leave that. I don't know. AT in the figure is X plus another 15. So I'm going to call that x plus 15. OT is just the 15. Uh, where am I here? BT is 12. And DT is 9. So when I look at those three ratios, boy, I like these two right here. Because this one I know both values. This has the x that I'm looking for. So I guess I don't even really need this one. So I'll just cross that one out. I'm going to cross multiply here. So I'm going to do 12 times 15, that's 180, 9x, and then 9 times 15 is 135. Now if I subtract, I get 45 equals 9x, and x equals 5. Uh, in the question, it just said find the value of x, so I'm done. All right, let's keep moving. we got a few more examples here. Uh, this one again deals with sides. Notice there's nothing about angles here on this first one. So let's go ahead and do just what we did before. Let's write down the ratios. PQ and GH. I have QR and HI. And then I have PR and GI. All right, let's see what I know. PQ is 8. QR is 6, PR is 11, so I know all the top numbers. I have HI is 24, and it asks for the perimeter of this triangle right here. So it looks like I need to know both GH and GI in order to find that perimeter. Well, the good news is I have a ratio where I know both parts. So I'm going to use that in two separate proportions. I could start with this one right here. I could say 8 over GH equals 6 over 24. And I could solve that. Uh, or I could do this ratio and I could say 6 over 24 equals 11 over GI and solve for that one. Now if you don't have a calculator, reduce. 6 goes into 6 once, 6 goes into 24 four times. So now if I cross multiply, GH is 32. I'm going to reduce again here. If I cross multiply, I get GI to be 44. So then my perimeter, right, would be all these bottom pieces. So GH is 32, HI was 24, and GI was 44. If I add all those up, the perimeter is 100. So starting with these ratios is really helpful. All right, here's a diagram you're going to see a lot of. This triangle on top here, let me color it in. So this yellow triangle is similar 
to this green triangle. Okay, I lost my yellow side here. All right, so those are the two similar triangles. Let's mark up the information. ST is 4, TP is 6, TQ is 8, and it says find PR. So I'm going to put an X there. All right. So this is one where you can probably eyeball it without using this to write out all the ratios. I'm given the yellow side of 4. So the yellow side of 4 should go with this green side right here. You can see the common mistake. Students want to put 6 here. 6 is not the side of the green triangle. It's 4 is this side, but SP represents this whole side. You can see it here. ST, this yellow side, goes with SP, this green side. So that's 4 plus 6. That's 10. That's usually where students make their mistake, right there. And then what else do we have? 8 in the yellow triangle. So that goes on top. I have my yellows on top. Goes with green on the bottom. That is x. So if I cross multiply, 4x is 80 and x is 20. Okay. Uh, now in part b, I'm going to draw it again for you here. Let's redraw it for part b. Here's the one triangle. And here's the yellow one on top. We kind of changed some of the numbers, so let's redo it. TQ is 5, that's this piece. PR is 15 down there. SQ is 4, that's this yellow piece. What is QR? QR is this piece right here, that's X. So if I start with this yellow side of 4, this yellow side, that's SQ. Look at first and last. SQ goes with first and last SR, that's this whole side. Yellow side, green side. That whole green side, that's 4 plus x. Again, that's where most students make their mistakes. Yellow side 5 goes with green side 15. So if I cross multiply there, I get 60 equals 20 plus 5x. 40 equals 5x and x equals 8 on that problem. Or not x, I'm sorry, was it supposed to be? Yeah, I called it x. All right, example seven, which of the following statements is true? These are some good ones that trip students up. Every two equilateral triangles are similar. I hope you know that because we discovered that in the very opening activity where I had you pick them. Equilateral triangles are also equiangular. They all match. This is the one that throws students. Every two rectangles are similar. And they say, well, yeah, all their angles match. But I'm going to draw you some. Does this rectangle look similar to this rectangle? I hope you can see that those sides would not be proportional. So that's a big no. That would be false. Every two equilateral quadrilaterals are similar. All right, I'm going to give you a perfect example here. We have a rhombus is an equilateral quadrilateral. But we also have a square is an equilateral quadrilateral. Do those two look similar? Are there corresponding angles congruent? No. So that's another one that trips people up. Uh, every two squares are similar. That is true because they are both equilateral and equiangular. So they are. Every two isosceles triangles are similar. This one is also a no. I think it's a little more obvious. You could draw one like this. And you could draw one like this, and you could see that those are clearly not similar. Their angle measures don't match. All right, number eight looks a lot like this green and yellow diagram we had up on top, but it's shifted. We have this little triangle here in the yellow, similar to the bigger triangle that I'm going to mark in green here. All right. Let's uh, write the formula for AC and AB. So if I take the yellow side X, that should go with this full green side. That's not the 5. So AE, look, first and last goes with first and last AC, which is X plus 5. So make a note of that. Equals yellow side 6 goes with this whole green side. This whole green side is 6 plus x plus 7, or you could call that x plus 13. So 
Let's redo that here. I have x over x plus 5 equals 6 over x plus 13. If I cross multiply, I get x squared plus 13x equals 6x plus 30. So that would be, if I get it on one side because I have a quadratic, x squared plus 7x minus 30 equals 0. Good news, that factors to what x plus 10, x minus 3. So x could be negative 10 or 3. I hope you can see why we throw out the negative 10, right? A side is x. x can't be a negative number. So x would be 3. So AC, if we wanted to write how long AC is, by the way, we should have said that was x plus 5. And the AB, that was this x plus 13. Okay, so be careful that you're choosing the whole side of the triangle. All right, last one. You can see the problems are the most challenging when we deal with sides. Let's mark this up. RT is 12. TQ is 3. RP is 8 more than RS. So if I call RSX, RP is 8 more. So I think that would mean this piece would have to be 8 because this whole piece would be X plus 8. All right, so let's do ratios. RS goes with RQ. ST goes with QP. And RT goes with RP. All right, so if I fill in what I know, uh, RS, that's X. RQ, RQ, that's 12 plus 3, that's 15. ST, I don't know. QP, I don't know. RT is 12, and RP is X plus 8. So these look like the two winning ratios because they have information. So if I set them equal to each other, and I cross multiply, I get 180 equals X squared plus 8X. That's a quadratic. So I'm going to subtract the 180. I'm going to factor. How about x plus 18, x minus 10? So x is negative 18, not possible. A side can't be a negative number. Or x equals 10. Looks like that's the realistic number. This time it doesn't ask for 10, it asks for rs. But oh look, rs is x. So rs is indeed just 10.